mansions, cars, wealth. Are these things that God will give you? Does God mind if we have them? Or must all those who follow him take a vow of poverty? There are many opinions about this, and some say that when you come to Christ that God will give you money. Others say that that's not the case. So in this video, we're getting down to the bottom of it. We're going to look at what the Bible says to answer the question, will God make you rich? Now the first thing I want to point out is that the Bible clearly shows that it is God's will to provide for us. Look at what Jesus said when he was speaking to some of the people in his day. In Matthew chapter 7 uh, verse 9, uh, Jesus was talking to the crowds as always and and they were concerned about things and about their uh, living. And Jesus said this, he said, which of you, if your son asked for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, would give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Hmm. So it's clear, Jesus was showing that God provides for us and he provides for our needs because we are his children. But the thing is, it's easy to read a verse like that and come away saying, well, well, hey, if, if, if I'm a child of God and God is obviously rich, I mean, wouldn't he want me to be a billionaire? I mean, wouldn't he want to just give me basically whatever to make me as rich as he is <laughs> okay let's let's take a look at this in the Bible first Timothy is a letter that the Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy and notice what Paul says about those who are concerned about being rich first Timothy 6 3 if anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing and think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain for we, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food, and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish desires, harmful desires, that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Hmm. You see, a verse like that kind of changes things because, you know, before we were just reading how Jesus said that, yes, God is our father and he wants to bless us and he provides for our needs. But here we see a verse that's almost warning us to not be concerned about pursuing riches. Hmm. OK, let's let's go a little deeper. Hebrews chapter 13, verse five. Keep your lives free from the love of money. And be content, there's that word again, with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. Okay, so it says that God will not leave us and he will not abandon us. Because, of course, you know, we understand why it says that, because he's our father. But it also says to keep our lives free from the love of money and to be content which is that the same thing Paul said to be content okay so what can we make of all of that I mean what can we say is is it wrong to be wealthy is it wrong to have riches hmm. well the the Bible shows that it was God who actually opened the doors for David to become king. It was God who allowed for Job to receive a lot of wealth. It was God who allowed for King Solomon to become king, and he was wealthy, very much so. So the Bible shows that no, having wealth is not wrong. And even today, 
Um, Billy Graham, Tony Evans, John Piper. You know, these are wealthy gospel centered people who live very comfortably. And did God take away their wealth? No, he didn't. Because God is not against you having wealth. And actually, he rewards hard work. Notice what Paul said. If a man does not work, he won't eat. God rewards work. And notice what King Solomon said. In all work, there is profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. And again, Solomon said, do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. You see, God values work and diligence just like a good father would. <laughs> and because God's the best father, he meets all of our needs. But at the same time, he pushes us to work in such a way that we become self-sufficient so that we can not only meet our needs, but also the needs of others. So I want to just clarify. God is not against having money. He isn't against you having wealth. Abraham was wealthy. Job was rich. Joseph was made the ruler in Egypt. And it was God who allowed for them to achieve these things. But it is so important and critical for us to take to heart what Paul said about being content. Because the truth of the matter is, this life is a vapor. You're here today and gone tomorrow in the blink of an eye. You could have a billion dollars and die tomorrow. You could be a millionaire and die in a crash. And then what happens to your money? Be content. Why? Because this life is fleeting. And half the stuff we worry about, it's not even worth it. And I believe that's one of the reasons why Jesus in his wisdom said this. Do not, store up for Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also your heart will be. So, will God make you rich in this life? Well, Ultimately, I think it depends on your your purpose, really. I mean, Job was rich. Solomon was rich. Billy Graham, who is well respected in the evangelical community, he became rich. But Paul, <laughs> good old Paul, who wrote nearly half of the New Testament, was not wealthy by any means. In fact, the man was beaten abused and repeatedly thrown in prison as he traveled from place to place to preach the gospel. But still, somehow through all of that, he said that he was content. How? Why? Because Paul knew that even though he was going through all of that in this life, he knew that as a child of God, he would eventually get his riches. <laughs> He knew that as children of God, we will eventually become more wealthy and well off than anyone who has ever existed in this life. Because Paul knew that when Jesus returns to this earth to rule as king, we will be ruling with him. And we also will be given a crown. So Paul in his wisdom, rather than seeking an earthly treasure, he was focused on a heavenly prize. As he said in 1 Corinthians 9.25, he was seeking a crown that doesn't fade away, but the crown that lasts forever. So the question that you know, we have to ask ourselves is this. Are we also willing to seek God's will even if it doesn't come with celebrity? <laughs> 